welcome to our special federal budget edition of CBA's Talking Economics with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia's Chief Economist, Stephen Hal Marrick, and today's special guest, Belinda Allen, Senior Economist. The government has the difficult challenge of meeting multiple goals with the outcome of the 2023-24 federal budget in the current high inflation environment. Now it's over to Belinda to break down the details. Thanks, Tony. It's great to be here uh, with Stephen to talk about Tuesday night's federal budget. Now, there was a lot of leaks going in to the federal budget for 2023-24, a lot of expectation that we could see a surplus delivered, which is the first time in, in close to 15 years, and we did see a surplus delivered. Yes, that's right. So for the, for the current financial year, the year ended 30th of June, the government's now estimating a budget surplus of just over $4 billion. That's a big improvement from mm. just in October last year. They thought this year's deficit would be closer to $37 billion. So there's actually about $42 billion uh, extra money available because the economy is lot, a lot stronger than they thought it was going to be. And they only spent about a billion dollars of that this year. So we're in a, a small surplus, which is great to see. It is. Now, we did see some significant upgrades to things like income tax collection, company tax collection, because commodity prices have been significantly higher than what was expected even since last October. The budget does slip back into deficit uh, next financial year, 2023-24, mainly because there are some uh, spending initiatives to take place, uh, but also uh, just as the economy continues to evolve as well. Yes, that's right. So for the coming year, uh, the deficit is estimated now at $13.9 billion. Again, that's a big reduction from previous estimates. Uh, once again, the strong economy has brought an improvement of about $42 billion to the budget next year, but the government has spent $12 billion of that, so we end up with a deficit of you know, almost $14 billion. Uh, but again, it just really slow, shows the, uh, the, the, the benefit of the strong economy, the strong labour market, the higher commodity prices, really helping the budget position. Uh, but the government's decided to recycle some of that back into the economy with some um, you know, targeted welfare payments and other, other spending initiatives. We'll get to the major policy announcements shortly, but, but one of the big thematics at the moment in the Australian economy, and certainly, uh, as Tony mentioned in his introduction, was that this budget was going to be set in a high inflation environment. So one of the biggest questions we're getting asked at the moment is, is this budget inflationary? Yeah. And, and how do we assess that? Well, so it's, it's, it's complicated. That, um, so we're moving from a budget surplus this year to a budget deficit next year. So theoretically, that's, that's stimulatory for the economy and more money being put back into the economy. And as I mentioned, the government's spending uh, an extra $12 billion of the, of the revenue that's arrived for, for next year. So on face value, that looks inflationary. They're putting more mm. money back into the economy and it's going uh, largely to people that you would think will spend that money. So people on very low incomes that are finding this high inflation environment very difficult. Uh, but the offset to that is the energy policy. So uh, rather strategically, the government's decided that the best way to help with energy bills is to lower the cost of the energy bills. So they're not giving money to people to pay their energy. They're actually lowering the cost of the energy bills. So when the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, measures the price of energy, it's going to be lower than it was, would have otherwise have been. And the budget says that will lower the inflation rate by 0.75 percentage points this year or the coming year. And so net net, uh, taking all that into consideration, we've actually left our inflation forecast unchanged. Uh, so we've got inflation moderating to around 3.5% by the end of this calendar year and back into the Reserve Bank's target range, which is 2 to 3% around about the middle of 2024. Now, I'm going to ask you what the budget might mean for the RBA shortly. Sure. But one of the other things uh, that we did see in the budget was a lot of spending restraint from the government. That's obviously going to help uh, the budget bottom line, but also yeah. the inflation context as well. You've spoken about the energy relief package. Uh, that was one of the key policy initiatives. But some other ones were around welfare payments, Medicare. What were some of the key policy announcements that, that you focused on? Yes, yeah, so I think that the, on the health sector it was probably some of the announcements in the budget that were not that leaked, so particularly around bulk billing. Yeah. So the, um, the incentives for doctors to really bulk bill, particularly for those on welfare and, um, and also those under 16, so children. Uh, so there's a lot of incentive for doctors to bulk bill, so I think that'll be very welcomed. Uh, there's also more money, as you said, for things like Job Seeker, so the unemployment benefit, 
that's up by $40 a fortnight. Probably not as much as some people would have wanted, but uh, it's good to see that moving. There's more money for um, single parent pension. Uh, so that used to cut out when the youngest child turned eight. It now will cut out when the youngest child turns 14. And there's a, a more money also for um, aged care workers, so a pay rise for aged care workers. And I don't think there's many Australians who would argue that that's you know, not a necessary, um, a necessary policy. Uh, there was also some um, incentives for uh, the housing sector. Yep. So build to rent, social housing, so that's good to see. Climate change policies, so incentives for people to make their homes more energy efficient and also to really help Australia drive into the energy transition, things like hydrogen. So yeah, lots, uh, lots <laughs> in, in there. Now, one of the, the other big uh, changes that we saw in the budget was a reduction in budget deficits for the out year. So we've talked about a surplus in 2022, 23, a smaller deficit next financial year, so the 2023, 24 budget. But even if you look out beyond that, and even over the next 10 years, the size of budget deficits are significantly smaller than what we saw on the October budget last year. And we commented at the time that those deficits were too large. So it is pleasing to see those deficit numbers come down. Yes, that's right. So in October last year, the, the, you know, the four-year projection for budgets was deficits around 1.8 to 2% of GDP. That's about $50 billion. And in our budget note in October last year, we said, well, we think that's a bit too high and they should be targeting deficits of between one and one and a half percent of GDP. So last uh, on Tuesday night, that's what we got. Yeah. So uh, out to the year 26, 27, uh, the budget deficits are estimated around one to 1.3 percent of GDP. So 20 to 30 billion dollars. And that's come through a combination of extra money coming through because mm. the economy is going to be stronger to the tune of about $140 billion, a uh, but they've spent uh, just over $20 billion of that. So uh, some, um, some spending restraint, as you said there. So the combination of stronger economy, bringing revenue in, reducing spending, a little bit of spending restraint, and the, the budget deficits now look uh, a lot more manageable over the next four or five years. That's right. And I think some spending, some reforms to the NDIS program has helped that. We're also seeing lower interest costs as well because right. bond yields have come down. Mm. And also, as you said, those changes in economic forecasts. So one of the big changes we've seen since the October budget is an upgrade in population forecast. So we have more people in Australia. We have more people working and that's going to improve the budget bottom line as well. And what about any initiatives that will benefit the not-for-profit sector in particular? Well, I think there was a good focus on education spending as well as the health spending. So providers in that sector, I think, will benefit. Uh, there's also incentives for small businesses to commercialise ideas, uh, also particularly in the energy transition sector, uh, the incentives for people to make their homes more energy efficient. I think that could you know, support small businesses. There's a little bit of extra money for Indigenous communities, so I think that will help as well. And what we also saw is the government's continued focus to put their NDIS on a more sustainable footing. Yes, that's right. And I think that's going to help those small businesses and non-profit non area that provide into that really important sector. Now, final question. Sure. The economy in the context of the budget, we are going to see a slowdown in economic growth this year. That's already coming through, mm. really driven through the consumer and that material lift in interest rates we've seen over the past 12 months. How should the RBA be viewing this in the context of what it means for inflation and the future of interest rates? Yes, yeah, so as you say, we, we are expecting the pace of economic growth to slow pretty significantly, as is the budget. Uh, so um, the, you know, the lagged effect of those big increase in interest rates, a slower global economy, uh, commodity prices expected to moderate a bit. So all that adds up to a much slower economy over the next 12 to 18 months than we've seen in the last 12 to 18 months. And we think that means the inflation rate has peaked. And the most recent inflation numbers uh, showed a moderation in inflation in the first quarter of this year. Uh, we expect inflation to continue to moderate into 2024. Uh, the unemployment rate looks like it's hit a low of around 3.4, 3.5%. We think that'll be uh, closer to 4.5% by the middle of next year. So slower economy, uh, a peaking in inflation, some moderation in inflation, a pickup in the unemployment rate. All of that suggests to us that the Reserve Bank interest rate hiking cycle has come to an end uh, at 3.85 per cent. And over the next uh, you know, coming months, uh, the RBA is going to be on hold as the economy slows. So uh, quite a different environment to 
what we've seen in the last year where it was you know, these constant uh, interest rate rises. And bottom line is we don't think the budget has changed any of those forecasts. Um, so that's uh, our, our current view. Great, Stephen, thank you so much for your insights. My pleasure, thanks Belinda.